earlier about the way the system operates today within the region and the deficiencies in that in that system. We'll uh, talk to you now about uh, some of the transformative options and actions that we're considering, uh, the items we're advocating for rail, for bus, uh, and other transit modes uh, through the Naugatuck Valley region. Um, so with that, Mark, if you want to come up and uh, go through uh, the region's priorities. Thank you. Thank you. No, hello again. Um, I'm going to try to bring us back down from the high level um, view that uh, Joe and uh, David talked about and sort of focus more on what's going on in the region in terms of the transportation uh, in the coming, coming years. Uh, again, we have a lot of highway issues that we've already talked about. You know, 84 is congested. Uh, speeds are fairly low in both the morning and evening peak hours. Route 8 uh, doesn't meet modern design standards in a lot of locations. Uh, it was built in the 60s, and we have a lot of short on and off ramps, uh, high accident rates in several areas. And the Commodore Hall Bridge is a real choke point. Um, we, again, have low speeds approaching that bridge in the morning and in the afternoon. Route 34, which is a key artery in the lower valley area, um, is congested as it approaches into Derby. It also handles about 40,000 cars a day, which is a, a large amount for a, uh, you know, a four-lane state highway. The mix master, we've talked about that earlier. It's the approaching storm. Um, we know it needs to be repaired. It was built in the 1960s. It's coming. It's going to be a very expensive project. It's going to be very disruptive to the, to the area. Um, it, it, it's considered one of the most uh, congested areas in the country. Again, high accident rate, um, and, you know, over 760 accidents over the last three-year period. What I found amazing when I started looking at the data, 112,000 vehicles a day move between 84, Route 8, and the local roads on the ramps that make up the Mixmaster. An incredible amount of, uh, of traffic. And so what we're looking at doing is, you know, what kinds of projects are we looking at in the future? You know, obviously we talked about the Mixmaster coming in uh, the next 20 years or so. A $7 billion project um, currently, so when they actually get around to building it, it's going to be a lot more. Some of the other projects that we're looking at at the region are uh, focused on uh, modernizing Route 8. Uh, one of the projects is realigning Interchange 16 and 17 in the Derby and Sonia area. This would also provide better access to the downtown Derby and downtown Ansonia. Uh, the commissioner this morning talked about uh, expending about $500 million on Route 8 operational improvements. We have identified a number of uh, intersection, uh, interchanges that need those improvements, uh, mostly from about the section through uh, Seymour up through Naugatuck into Waterbury. Again, short on and off ramps, poor acceleration, deceleration, weave sections, uh, narrow width. So all those projects, if we're done in today's dollars, is roughly $96 million. Route 34 is a project that the uh, region initiated a number of years ago. It's going to transform the downtown area of Derby from a two-lane road to a four-lane uh, roadway. And we didn't want it to become an arterial, a high-speed arterial. And so it includes a lot of complete streets elements that will retain the fact that Route 34 through Derby is its main street. Um, and you know, that's key because we're trying to maintain the downtowns. Waterbury Branch Line is a focus of the region. Um, uh, earlier, David Fink talked about having housing uh, sort of drive the demand for rail service. In some ways, I think in this region, we're going to have to have the rail service or transit service first in order to attract the housing. We have to have the, the convenient and attractive service in place in order for people uh, to want to live in these uh, areas. Again, the Waterbury Branch Line has limited service. We only have about eight inbound trains and seven outbound trains. You know, headways are two and a half hours. Not a very uh, attractive alternative. No signals on it, so it's basically dark territory. They can run one train at a time, and that's why we have uh, the, the long headways that we do. What we want to see in terms of improving the rail line 
uh, is really transforming that corridor. Uh, the state is in the process of uh, designing and implementing uh, a full signalization. The positive change control is also going to be implemented as part of the signalization. And passing sightings. The passing sightings will allow uh, more than one train to operate on the track at a time. Um, you know, a, a northbound train can move over to the siding to allow a southbound uh, train to, to pass, for example. The, the region is also about to initiate an alternative modes uh, assessment. Uh, it's being put together with several FTA grants and the state TOD grant. And what this is going to do is look at alternative transit options within the Route 8 and Waterbury Branch uh, Line corridor. Uh, we want to look at feasible alternatives. And you know, we're hoping you know, not to exclude anything from the outset. We want to look at all different options. Uh, in terms of what we're kind of looking at in terms of transformative rail projects is we do want to add more uh, and, and more frequent service. Commissioner uh, sort of alluded to that this morning. With the infrastructure improvements, we'll have the opportunity to uh, increase operations. Uh, one of the ideas we're looking at is creating a, a transfer point at Devon. Uh, there was a temporary one during the uh, summer uh, where they were doing some bridge work. It worked relatively well, and what the idea here is is that this would allow um, Waterbury branch trains to meet all the mainline trains uh, heading uh, inbound or outbound, and um, sort of like in a shuttle uh, fashion. And it would also avoid adding uh, more trains onto the main line that sort of uh, is, has limited capacity. Again, we talked about bus service in the morning where it's, it's, it's somewhat fragmented. You can look at this slide and you, you, there's service in the Britain, Bristol area. There's service in the Waterbury area. There's service in the Lower Valley. But you really can't get from Bristol to, to directly to Waterbury. So what we're looking at is some enhancements to uh, existing services to try to make those connections. Maybe enhancing the uh, fast track service uh, that's operating uh, currently to provide a more direct connection to, to, to Bristol. Um, the, uh, and with the Waterbury and, and, and providing more direct service between New Britain and, and, uh, and Waterbury as well. Investigate opportunities or feasibility of extending fast track type service, you know, west of here to Danbury and south to serve, uh, make a direct connection to the Derby Shelton area. BRT is also something that we'll be looking at, bus rapid transit, um, using buses in a different way. Uh, instead of you know, local service, it becomes much more uh, fast and express type service. The idea would be to, uh, if, if, to make a direct connection between the Derby Shelton area directly to Bridgeport to make connect connections at the downtown rail station or the proposed uh, new station in, in, on the east side at Barnum. Again, we talked about the Nogtuck Valley region having a lot of assets. Um, and, and by making these investments in our current and existing infrastructure, you know, we can maybe realize a, uh, you know, a, a new, new way of new communities. We have compact, walkable downtowns. We have the existing infrastructure. The areas have public sewer and public water. They can support higher densities. The, the rivers are scenic. Um, they're attractive to people to, to live. One of the projects that, you know, that we are working on that we think can uh, add to the attractiveness and quality of life in the region is the Nogtuck River Greenway. It's a 44-mile multi-use trail that will connect 11 communities running from Derby to uh, Torrington. It will provide economic, health, and quality of life benefits, and it, it does provide that alternative transportation. Oh, wrong way, <laughs> sorry. And uh, the, the mayor this morning sort of alluded to the, uh, what's referred to as the water project. It's the Waterbury Active Transportation and Economic Resurgence Project. It was funded under a Tiger grant. Tiger is a discretionary program at the US DOT. It's highly competitive. Um, and Waterbury was very fortunate uh, to, to receive the, the funding they did. And this project is really going to transform that side of the city, the Freight Street District. 
It has a lot of elements that will make it a very attractive. It will bring people back to the river, and that's, that's sort of a key uh, element of the project. Complete Streets is going to be a fundamental um, aspect of all the things that we do to try to revitalize our downtowns. It, it's a way of converting existing roads from just being used by cars, but it's being used and accommodate all types of users. It creates a more walkable, more livable, more sustainable uh, downtown. It will add green infrastructure to handle stormwater. It also adds, adds beauty and aesthetic quality. Uh, we'll have pedestrian enhancements, bike accommodations, and so forth. This is all leads to what we're hoping to have a new vision for the region. Again, it's it developably livable and sustainable downtowns, provide unique facilities, create town centers that, that have a you know, wide range of uses. Uh, it's not just, uh, you know, we don't want to separate the uses. We want to have housing and residential next to businesses and entertainment and retail. We want to link our town centers up and down the corridor via more convenient transit. And finally, we want to make sure we invest in the existing infrastructure to revitalize the communities. We want to make appropriate investments into the transportation system and our other infrastructure. And with that, I thank you for, for listening and pass it along. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Um, so some of the things that Mark talked about uh, for the vision for the region, from the center, from Waterbury, we want to make those connections in every direction. Uh, BRT versus rail is a discussion that we're having. Um, the Waterbury branch line is important, and we want to see those rail improvements. We, uh, the region prefers to see the establishment of the Devon station that Mark described. Uh, it's really a transfer point. So that the Waterbury branch, which is not planned to be electrified, can continue to run as a diesel shuttle back and forth between those points, providing service uh, to the main line and meeting as many trains as possible, uh, frankly, as many as the DOT can afford to pay Metro North to meet. Um, there's a, it was an earlier discussion about double tracking and uh, bypass tracking. In the uh, Waterbury and New Canaan branch line study that was done several years ago, the difference in headways on trains for the two options was only about six minutes. So uh, from a cost basis, the, uh, the bypass tracking made much more sense. It really didn't gain us much. We probably wouldn't schedule that many trains where double tracking would be necessary. Um, for the other routes that aren't served by rail today, and, and this brings up the Central Connecticut Rail Corridor, the connection uh, uh, from Waterbury across to Bristol. Uh, actually to Berlin, it goes uh, on the Berlin secondary. Um, I think that's, that's a question that we need to define further. Um, whether that line can accommodate commuter rail, it would certainly be our hope, uh, and it's what we support as a primary objective. Um, but we may want to look at BRT service to Bristol. Uh, right now we have express service on CT Fast Track from Waterbury to New Britain, and you have to backtrack to Bristol to get there. Um, direct BRT service, full BRT service from Waterbury to Bristol and on to New Britain would be preferable on that system. Um, the other one that's really important for us, I think, is to get to Danbury. Um, we have probably the, the second most requests after, after Bristol and Berlin is uh, bus service or any service between Waterbury and Danbury. Uh, right now, it's only the private bus lines, uh, Peter Pan uh, and um, I forget the other provider, uh, who travel back and forth between that point. There's the uh, construction of a new campus in the community college system between uh, the Naugatuck Valley Community College that I believe is being established in the Danbury area. Uh, the ability to move people back and forth on that corridor for, for educational purposes and for commuting purposes is very, very important to us. Um, and then lastly, uh, as Mark said, we're going to be kicking off uh, the Brood 8 corridor study, which is going to look at BRT uh, from the Naugatuck Valley to get to those job centers in Shelton and Trumbull uh, down to the Bridgeport Station, because in that whole Route 8 corridor, there really is no commuting option. You have to drive your car to get there. So those are the things that we're, we've been looking at and the things that are, that are important. 
to us. Um, as I said, we're going we're gonna to sort of skip over the panel discussion uh, and go right to Q&A from the audience. So uh, at this point, if there are any questions for any of the panelists on any of the items they proposed or any of the items I discussed, uh, happy to take them at this time. Is there any? Do we have any? I can't really see, so let me 